You are now listening to the Car Lifestyle Podcast. With host Seth Rose from Exotics Rally. Elizabeth White from It's White Noise. Car Lifestyle. Hello and welcome to the Car Lifestyle Podcast. Today we are live from the second day of the North American International Auto Show here in Detroit. I am joined by my co-host, Seth Rose. What's up, guys? And we have a very special guest with us today, Keith St. Clair. He is the Director of Product Strategy at Infinity North America. That's a long title. It is long. It so, was call me Keith, though. <laughs> okay, Keith. <laughs> so uh, how long have you been with Infinity? Well, it'll be going on six years uh, in March of this year. So um, just, just about one generation of product. How's that? Okay. And uh, prior to that? Well, I spent about uh, 21 years with uh, the Toyota and Lexus organization. Wow. Long long stretch. Uh, uh, yeah, quite a bit. Quite a bit of time. And being that you're only like 38 years old, I mean, this is... They get you young. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they work you when you're in kindergarten. Yeah. It's... Excellent. So why don't we get a little history of you and your uh, how you got involved in the automotive world, starting at a young age, I'm assuming? Uh, sure. Well, I, I've always loved cars. That was the easy part. Uh, but to be very honest with you, I, I had not planned on a career in the auto business. Uh, late in my college um, college life, I had a chance to do an internship uh, with Toyota, and that was where the love affair began. So I did that in my junior year, and when I graduated school, and I did some time in, in the military. I came back, and they offered me a full-time job, and I've been with the car business ever since. Excellent. So uh, why don't you take us back to uh, childhood memories of cars? Have you? Uh, what was your first car? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my very first car, it's, I, I shared a car with my sister. My father years ago bought a 1969 Firebird for my sister, uh, but I quickly claimed ownership of that. Uh, so it, we were both in high school at the time, and so we shared it, although it was hers, uh, but I still largely identify that car as, uh, as one of my own. It was That, that car is a special place in my heart. Do you still have it? Uh, no, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, we didn't return it in the condition that we received it. So <laughs> gotcha. as these things happen when you're that age. Indeed. I went through my share, that's for sure. Yeah. Did it have the bird on the hood? No, this was 69. Oh, and so 69. Now that, that didn't oh. come out until later. That came out late, later in the 70s. Sorry, yeah, yeah. but still. I wasn't alive then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> awesome. So when you started um, college, what yeah. did you end up mastering in or getting a degree in? Well, I studied uh, science. I mean, I had a degree in physics. Um, I studied electrical engineering and, and math. So I was headed towards an engineering field, uh, but I didn't specifically call out automotive um, in my college years. This came much later. So, yeah. So then you got sucked into Toyota for 21 years? It wasn't much of a sucking in me <laughs> into it, but I'll tell you, I had the opportunity. Someone called and said, hey, they're doing, there's some summer internships available uh, at Toyota down the street. Would you be interested in applying for this? And that wasn't a very difficult conversation. Absolutely. Uh, and so that's where it started. And it, I just found it was a fantastic place to make a career. And now, all these years later, you're at Infinity. I am. And uh, the great thing about the car business, from my perspective, is that it tends to reward uh, generalists because there's so many facets of the car business. You don't have to specialize in one thing. Uh, if you want to, you can do a lot of different things in the car business. It has so many different um, uh, areas of, of that are very broad unto themselves. I've had a couple of interns in the last couple of years work for me, and I specifically point this out to them. I, we draw pictures of how broad the business is, and there's so many ways to participate. Uh, and it opens their eyes. Uh, those are always fun conversations because you can talk about, well, once you've done this, you might want to do this, and you might want to do that. If you want to travel around the world, well, guess what? You can do that, too. So um, have had a chance to work in a lot of different areas of the business in the last oh, 27, 28 years. And what's your favorite? Well, I love product. So anything to do with the product uh, it really draws me in. So it can be product planning, product strategy, uh, engineering, uh, and those, those areas to me are of great interest. So being that you're in Infinity now, a lot of our listeners uh, associate Infinity directly with Nissan. How would you differentiate the two? Well, you know, uh, Nissan is the, the, the parent company. It's where we get our DNA from. Uh, Infinity is essentially a, a premium brand based off of the Nissan product. It's our, it's our mother, our, our mother ship, right? But they're completely different brands, right? And the Infinity brand is a premium expression. We have a very different consumer set. 
And the Nissan brand is a full line manufacturer of, of you know, non-premium products per se with a very broad range of offerings and, and, and buyers. Uh, but Infinity is specifically meant to be a premium offering. Okay, so it's strictly a luxury brand. Absolutely. And it'd be very akin to saying, what's the Audi versus a VW or a Lexus versus a Toyota? Right. right? Or a Cadillac versus another GM product, right? Okay. So uh, do you have a favorite Infinity as of this moment? Well, uh, I love the new Q50 and the Q60 because yeah. they sport yeah. the new engines. And I got to tell you, I love the new uh, engine family. That was a I, really exciting product. I actually have a, uh, a vehicle accessory business, and uh, we just had a brand new Neiman Marcus edition come in. Oh. The Q60S uh, Red Sport, I guess it's called, Neiman Marcus edition. Uh, well, the Neiman Marcus wouldn't be a Red Sport. It'd be just a Neiman Marcus unto okay. itself, but yes. Yeah, interesting car. Yeah. Very, very fast. Oh, it's, that's very got, impressive. So it, it, that, that vehicle, let me, let me uh, step back. That does have the, uh, the 400, 400 horsepower, horsepower, so it is a red sport. I, I stand yeah. corrected. But it has the unique color, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, that is a killer car. That is a lot of fun. It's a lot of car. It is. It was impressive. The interior, the fit and finish. Uh, I enjoyed working on it. It's not mine, but uh, close right. friends. So maybe yeah. I'll get some wheel time behind That's it. That's a special car. I think that uh, when we look back a few years from now, we'll see that that car really has a special place in people's hearts, just like the previous generation G Coupes did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a crazy following for G bodies. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. There's the G clubs. Yeah. You know, Coupes, coupes are, um, you know, all the rage right now in the industry, it's been this way for a few years, is the movement towards utility vehicles, you know, SUVs and crossover utilities. Uh, and so not a lot of attention goes to passenger cars, and so coupes, coupes are a very special uh, part of the, of the market. I don't, I don't think they'll ever die. There always have been, still will be a very a small market, uh, because nobody ever really needed a coupe. Right. You want one. Right? So you see more of a trend desire. of people going to SUVs and or coupes and not really staying in the middle with sedans as much? Well, we've seen it in the numbers, right? So we've seen the shift away from sedans to utility vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, but the two-door coupes, they've never been really... Uh, vehicles designed for utility of any kind. They're right. very much uh, sports uh, products. and uh, So for that reason, they're special, right? They'll always be special. And so uh, our coupe, I think, is, is a fantastic product. Are they making it a manual transmission by chance? Well, we aren't offering one right now, and we haven't announced any plans to do so. Uh, I will tell you that it's becoming more difficult to offer manuals anymore in the business. It's just more difficult for uh, them to make sense. There's fewer and fewer people that actually want to yeah. use one. Uh, and it's more difficult to make them fit with some of the more modern technologies we have available, right? So where it's that part of the mechanical componentry that uh, if you're re relying on the human to interact, it, it struggles with other elements of the safety technology, including autonomous drive systems. Sure. Right? So, yeah. Interesting. So uh, what do you currently drive? Well, uh, it depends upon the week. <laughs> because we you get your pick of the litter we do and we have a fleet of vehicles we have a fleet of vehicles of our own and competitive vehicles so I, I tend to drive a car for a week or two on end uh, to get as familiar with it as I can and uh, so as a matter of fact I just went into a Q50 uh, two liter I'm driving that for the next couple of weeks and prior to that I was driving a new Mercedes-Benz E-Class for about two weeks what do you think of the E-Class it's very much a Mercedes. Yeah. Uh, they do a fantastic job in, in the areas of you know noise and vibration and, and harshness. They do a fantastic job of making the car smooth and quiet. Uh, it's their, it's a four-cylinder, and I think it will surprise people who aren't that familiar how competent a four-cylinder can be today. Uh, so they did a very good job uh, on that product. I, I won't say anything negative about it because it doesn't it doesn't um, warrant that. Right. It's very good. So. Moving on from your possible daily driver, you actually have some cool cars in your garage as well. Mm. Let's talk about a couple of those and then maybe some of the ones you've built with your children. Well, um, I've got, I have a 55 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. I have a, I have a strange love affair with Cadillacs and some people think it's strange, but uh, <laughs> it, this goes back many years. I, I have a love affair with caddies. But I've currently got a 55 Cadillac Coupe de Ville that's a frame-off uh, custom build that my son and I put together. Uh, we also put together for him when he was in high school a 66 Mustang Fastback, which we still have. Uh, that was a, a complete build-up, but it's not stock. It's largely a, a hot rod, street-legal race car. And then we just acquired my daughter. You know, my daughter came to me, she's 15, and she said to me some time ago, you know, I'm, I want to get a car and get ready to drive. And 
you know, Christopher, my son, she, Christopher got a, got a custom car for a high school, so I want a custom car. <laughs> you know, I was rolling my eyes, not doing that again. Uh, and, of course, the, the way to my heart is, hey, but what, it can be a father-daughter project. Well, all right, fine, that's what, no, no way to argue that with tears in your eyes. So uh, we decided to, she wanted to build a truck. So we picked up a 95 Ford Bronco. Cool. And she wants to make a, um, a, a, a very, very built uh, off-road truck out of it. So that's awesome. The garage it's gutted. It's completely gutted. Uh, powertrains all out of it. Interiors ripped out of it. And we're going to build it from the ground up. Um, so and you're hands on. Do you do all the work yourself? We do like about ninety plus percent. I don't do any stitch work. Right. Uh, I do a fair amount of body work, um, all the welding and fabrication ourselves. But I don't do any paint. I'll do some limited paint, mm -hmm. but um, <clears throat> I usually have to do things twice. <laughs> yeah. So it goes slow. Yeah. That's awesome. Anything in your garage uh, amongst one of your favorites? I love them all for what they are. They each have their own character. Um, so uh, I, can't, I can't pick a favorite right now. Mm -hmm. I can't. I wouldn't say. Awesome. So with your full automotive background, you've been able to travel the world and go to some amazing events, mm -hmm. including some of the Formula One races. Oh, yes. Do you have any favorite places or any favorite experiences you've had in the automotive field? Well, I'll tell you this, though. When you get to go to an event like a Formula One race, and, and not, not a lot of people get to experience these things. Um, <clears throat> it's not accessible to, to a lot of people, and, and uh, uh, it's a pretty special event. Um, but the F1 race, the ones that I've been to, I've been to maybe a dozen. Uh, they're all very special. They're very unique. Uh, around the world, I've been to a few of those. Those are fantastic. Another event that I will cherish, it's not really part of the auto business, is <clears throat> every year in Japan, in December, in Yokohama, they have a custom car show. And I don't think everyone, you know, who, people might not think Japan's a place for custom cars. But if you go to the uh, Pacifico Arena in Yokohama in December, you'll see a, a hot rod show that looks like you're somewhere in the middle of America. It's, it's like a, just a fantastic experience. That's one of my favorites. And because I'm in the car business and we, I work for a Japanese car company, it's not hard to find myself in Yokohama in the month of December. So that, to me, is a, is a special event, um, very sp special place in my heart. Yeah, Japan is well known for custom Y bodies and low um, frame and they are building everything you put anything out there even including a competitor like the NSX they're already building Y body kits to put on display next week in Tokyo. Mm. Have you ever seen one of your current brand Infinity built to the nines or have, yes. like, what well, is interesting? You know you see those uh, well, there's uh, car shows all over the, the country, and in Japan, there's a few of them, and, and in Europe, you see a lot of people building uh, the previous generation G coupes. That's a very that's a big favorite. It's you see them nice. at SEMA. We used to see those at SEMA a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, fewer and fewer now. You're seeing they're looking for the more con contemporary products there uh, to be to be modified with accessorization and kits. But uh, the previous generation G, I think, is a very strong following. And those are always fun to see how those things have been uh, put together. Well, there's been a lot of them with a lot of high horsepower ones built and uh, transplanted engines and some crazy stuff going on. There are, but what's great about that is um, when you see that's the expression or interpretation of the owner, right? It gets to be sure. their, their palette. And uh, so that's what's fun about SEMA is if you get the chance to talk to the fabricators, uh, that's always a fun conversation to know, to understand why they did what they did. What drives them, sure. Sure. What, is, uh, what does Infinity have in the future? Is there anything that's going to be as far as like a supercar? Or are they going to dive into that world? You know, we don't. Uh, the unfortunate thing about my position is I, I'm not in position to talk about the future products so much because uh, <laughs> we, we don't usually release that publicly for all the reasons you, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, what, I, what I can tell you is that you know, Infinity is very much a performance-oriented brand. Uh, there are people at the center of the brand with great passion. And we're always looking for the opportunity to introduce those cars, like you're speaking of. Uh, but we don't have one. You won't see it uh, next year. I won't, I won't even pretend. It won't be here this year or next year. Right. But we have every intention to build those cars that, that make your heart beat faster. Yeah, because, I mean, the ongoing trend has been the high-performance uh, hyper cars as far as, mm, yeah. you know, gas and hybrid technology working together to create massive horsepower. True. And, but also what's important is to make cars relevant to people. Uh, some of the cars that, you know, someday I perhaps we'll make, we'll make, they're a bit out of reach for most people too. So we need to make sure that what we produce is relevant and accessible to the audience that sure. we speak to. 
Sure. That's why, by the way, the Q60 you mentioned, the 400 horsepower, uh, that's one heck of a car that I would argue is untouchable in terms of where it's positioned in the marketplace. Price-wise. Absolutely. Price-wise, great bang for the buck. The bang, the level of quality, the level of material, the fit and finish, that is a world-class product at an amazing price position. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, it's almost like a luxury GTR. It's, uh, I mean, it, you know, it's a coupe. It's, the, the interior is amazing. Yeah. I was really impressed with the, the fit and finish of it, and uh, it is fast. I'm really surprised at how much they get out of the 400 it's horsepower. Very, very, yeah, it's very quick. Torque. Yeah, and it's very manageable. And it's not. Uh, it's very linear power delivery. If you had a chance to drive that car aggressively, hopefully not on public roads. But not yet. It is. It is. Uh, <laughs> it's a very, very. It's a fantastic package. Yes. I mean, cool. Infinity is putting so much technology into all the the future model and the current unveils we're seeing here. Yes. Is there anything that will offset you from any other manufacturer? What would you tell our listeners that makes you different in that realm? Oh, that's a great question. Um, Infinity is, has been a world leader, has brought to market uh, as a first mover a whole range of technologies that many people probably don't know, uh, and we continue to do that. So oftentimes you see um, kind of the consumer-facing infotainment things that get a lot of uh, public uh, awareness. But really, at, at, at the core of a vehicle, the things that make it go, make it stop, make it turn, make it safe, that's where most of our DNA is. Uh, so those technologies that enhance the driver, that makes the driver more capable than they otherwise would be on their own, that's where we specialize. Uh, and that's the things that we have brought to market in the past and continue to do. Uh, so you'll see those on every car that we deploy, you'll see those elements of our DNA, just like the vehicle we're showing this week in Detroit. Yes, it's a utility vehicle, but at its core, you'll see uh, technologies that are first to market, that were in, uh, deployed by our brand, and they're designed to make the, the driver much more confident and competent uh, in the cockpit. I, I saw in the, in the Q60S I was talking about before, they started with the, uh, the self-parking feature, I think. In the Q60? Yeah. Uh, well, in we have it, right, not in the Q60 t- today. We have that in the QX30. It's the uh, intelligent park assist. Intelligent park assist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you see them venturing with like everybody else into autonomous driving? Well, I would argue we've been a leader in that. And right now, I think the space, we would call it semi-autonomous, right? right. So there's building blocks. Now, the world of autonomous driving is, is just now building a lot of momentum. Uh, and it has a ways to go before it's... Ready Long for all audiences, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Long ways. But, uh, uh, Thankfully. <laughs> yeah. We're, the car that we have announced today will have uh, autonomous drive, semi-autonomous drive technologies. And we've already deployed a few of them. I mean, you'll see that in the Q60 and the Q50. We have a direct adaptive steering. We have uh, 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 active trace control, active lane keep assist. So these technologies that are the building blocks of, of a ten- autonomous drive, uh, we've been first to market with. And they've really? been on the market for three years now. Interesting. Yeah. So how many models are available as a hybrid currently? Well, we offer that in the Q50, mm-hmm. uh, we offer that in the Q70, we offer it in the QX60. Uh, so we have three variants today that offer um, the hybrid technology. Interesting. Yeah. So, anything else you want to add, Liz? Um, I'm just excited to see like all the new models in the upcoming year, especially with the new power plant that you're telling. Because it is, um, we have seen a lot of the G and then we went to the Q and now what is the future of infinity? It's been growing a lot in the States because you see more people moving to... Turbos and, yeah. and higher horsepower. I mean, horsepower ratings is everything these days. It seems Zero to 60, um, everyone's worried the younger about generation. The right, right. You know, my mother, for instance, couldn't care less. But, you know, everybody's looking at numbers. And, you know, the big thing was when the GTR hit the soil and it was 500 horsepower. Yeah. And uh, people, you know, seem to focus a lot on numbers as far as horsepower. Mm-hmm. Do you see that yourself in the, the we market We do. And, and, area? and numbers are just one indication, right? But, but uh, the, in my experience, the best cars, the ones we fall in love with, aren't the ones with the best numbers on paper. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's often a necessary but not a sufficient component to making a car thrilling. Uh, I mean, you can't have really bad numbers, right? Uh, but the, the better the numbers, the better indicator of the car is going to be exciting. But today, today, your starting point is significantly better than the best of the best just 10 years ago. Sure. Uh, and that you can see just driving your, your average uh, everyday uh, people hauler seems to be much more competent on the road than your expensive exotics were 15 years oh, ago. Well, I all say right. it all the time. I mean, when I was younger... Uh, 
a Mustang was 220 horsepower. Yeah. And that was a big V8, and you were king of the hill with that. Oh, yeah. Today, 220 horsepower comes in, like, the smallest Nissan Sentra. <laughs> well, yeah, and the, the Sentra is amazingly uh, competent, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Very roadworthy car. Uh, it's pretty amazing when you compare those cars in that category today to cars, you know, of the, of the 60s. So when I, I love cars from the 50s and the 60s and 70s, but among my friends and those who build these cars, uh, it's, it's, to me, great to appreciate how good cars are today when you start working on those cars of yesteryear and how much more uh, competent they are today because yeah. they're difficult to drive those old cars. Uh, so a lot of us who fabricate cars like to rip out some of the old stuff and put in some of the modern stuff so Correct. that they're much well, you better You get used to all today's creature comforts. You know, we do. Park assist, rear, do. rear vision camera. Most <laughs> important for me, though, is chassis. And so if you're working on an older car and you're tearing it apart, to me, to me, the first thing we have to do is address the chassis so it's got the proper chassis dy- dynamics. That's the most important safety feature in a car is its right. ability to maneuver and, and respond to the pilot's inputs. So that's the first thing we go after is to update those chassis elements. And the great news is <clears throat> there's a lot of offerings today to do that. Is Infinity going to stay uh, involved in racing, motorsports? Well, you know, we have a, a partnership today with um, in, in the Formula One space. Uh, so we do work partner with our parent company, our alliance brand, Renault, in Formula One. Uh, the future of being more deeply involved in motorsport uh, remains to be seen. We'll share more of those plans at, uh, at a point in the very near future. But motorsport, um, motorsport is, is there for a number of reasons. Uh, it gets, it's a place where you get to try out early technologies, right? Yeah. And they certainly prove themselves. Uh, but also you get to build some relationships with uh, the fan base, but also the engineering base that is part of the racing community. Uh, so there's a lot of reasons to be involved in motorsport. So you should expect to see more about that in the near future. Cool. We've always loved the Red Bull car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, I loved that. Um, but I'm excited to see Renault this season or whoever you're partnering with in the future. Yeah, and Formula One, as you know, doesn't have a huge following the U.S. like it does elsewhere in the world, but Massive, yeah. but nonetheless, it's no less sophisticated. Wherever it goes, it's still Formula One. Uh, and the ones who go to those races <laughs> talk about a very passionate and involved um, fan base as Formula One racers. So Infinity is not moving to NASCAR anytime soon? I wouldn't expect to see that anytime soon. Okay. No. Just check. No, I, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't wait for that announcement. Um, okay. Yeah, nothing wrong with NASCAR at all. Uh, I, I just don't see us pursuing that as a first place to to uh, to uh, develop our technologies. Awesome. So, if our listeners are considering an Infinity, what should they go into the dealership and expect? Well, uh, first of all, uh, they should expect to be treated very well. I, one thing about this brand uh, is that, and you, no matter how you slice it, it has a, a great track record for taking care of its customers. Uh, so when you go to a, one of our retailers, I think that they should, be expected, they should expect to be taken care of. A retailer, at the end of the day, is a solution provider, and that's how we should view them. So there's lots of questions today in the car business. You can get a lot of them answered online, <clears throat> but it's... Best to get them followed up uh, face-to-face with the retailer. Uh, and they can, they can take care of a lot of things for you. I mean, we can't, how often do we, do we buy cars? Not, we don't buy them very often. I don't buy them ever because I work for a car company. <laughs> right. But all my friends and family do. And it can, there's a lot involved in buying a car. Um, to remove the anxiety and to make sure it's of benefit to you, the outcome, and the dealer, the dealer should be there to take care of you and to be a solution provider. And I think the Infinity retailers are world class in doing that. They should be. They should expect to get answers to their questions and taken care of. That's what they should expect. Awesome. So if you guys are out in the market, the Q60 is a great choice. Yeah, absolutely. Highly recommended. And Infinity was one of my first cars. I had a G20. Well, uh, <laughs> that would be a great first car. I wish yeah. I had the money to when I was that young to afford a G20. But um, he was thirty. <laughs> <laughs> That was, it, it was one of my first cars. Yeah. Yeah. My actual first car was a Nissan. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. We were a Nissan family. Staying. My first car that was actually only myself, didn't share with my sister, was a Datsun. Remember those, those cars? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's a Datsun. It was a Datsun wagon. It wasn't a Datsun Z or anything, but a Datsun <laughs> wagon. Nonetheless, it was mine. It was a Datsun. That's awesome. It got me around. So. Awesome. So thank you so much for thank joining you. us today. We are, again, live from the North American International Auto Show at the Infinity booth with Keith St. Clair. Thank you very much. Thank we you. appreciate your time and uh, your stories and your vision and you know what Infinity is doing today. And uh, hopefully our listeners will uh, 
appreciate all that and go visit their nearest Infinity dealership. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Car Lifestyle.